Welcome to an introduction to matrix transformations. Any function t that maps from Rn to Rm is a transformation, and we say t is a transformation from Rn to Rm. Given an m by n matrix A, the matrix transformation associated with matrix A is t of vector x equals matrix A times vector x, which is equal to some output vector y. So we can think of the matrix transformation as a matrix function where the inputs and outputs are vectors. The input vectors are in Rn, and the output vectors are in Rm, where n is the number of columns in matrix A, and m is the number of rows in matrix A. Before we look at some examples, let's define some vocabulary. Rn is the domain of T. These are the input vectors with n components. Rm is the codomain of T. For every vector x in Rn, the output vector t of vector x or vector y is called the image of vector x under t. And for every t of vector x or vector y in Rm, the input vector x is called the preimage. The set of all images t of x or vector y is called the range of t. The range of t is the column space of matrix A. So looking at the diagram below, again Rn is the domain, Rm is the codomain, Vector x is the input vector, and the output vector is a times vector x or vector y. We can say vector y is the image of vector x under t, and vector x is the preimage. Also notice how the range may or may not be all of Rm, since the range of t is the column space of matrix A. The range can be a subset of Rm. Let's take a look at some examples. We are given matrix A, which is a two by three matrix, and we're given the matrix transformation as T of vector X equals matrix A times vector X. Since matrix A is a two by three matrix where M is two and N is three, T is a transformation from R3 to R2. Next, we're asked to find the image of vector X, which means we need to find t of the vector two, negative six, five. To do this, we need to find the product of matrix A and the given vector x. I've already set this up below. Notice how the product is the vector 18, four. If we look at the dimensions of the product here on the left, again, matrix A is a two by three matrix. Vector x is a three by one matrix. Because three equals three, we know we can multiply and the result is a two by one matrix, which verifies this is a transformation from R3 to R2. So let's take a look at this graphically. The blue vector in R3 is vector X, the input vector, and the red vector or output vector is the vector in the yellow XY plane. We can say the red output vector is the image of the input vector under T, and we can say the blue input vector is the preimage. Again, where our domain is R3, and the codomain is R2, the xy plane, which is in yellow. And now let's take a look at a second example. We're given matrix B. Notice matrix B is a three by two matrix, three rows and two columns, and we're given the matrix transformation as T of vector x equals matrix B times vector x. Because matrix B is a three by two matrix, T is a transformation from R2 to R3. We're asked to find the image of vector X, which means we need to find T of the vector negative three, four, which I've already set up below. Again, checking the dimensions of the product. Because two equals two, we know we can multiply, and the result is a three by one matrix verifying this is a transformation from R2 to R3. And the product is the vector negative three, negative 10, seven. Let's also look at this graphically. This time we have a transformation from R2 to R3, and therefore the input vector is the blue vector in the xy plane, and the output vector is the red vector in R3. The red output vector is called the image of the blue input vector under T, and the blue input vector is called the preimage.
Before we go, let's talk about a linear transformation. A function that maps one vector space to another vector space while preserving vector addition and scalar multiplication is a linear transformation. And there are two properties of linear transformations. T of the sum of vectors u and v is equal to T of vector u plus T of vector v. And T of C times vector u is equal to C times T of vector u. And since a matrix transformation satisfies these two properties, a matrix transformation is a linear transformation. Let's go ahead and prove these two properties for a matrix transformation. First, we need to show that T of the sum of u and v equals T of u plus T of v. Well, T of the sum of u and v is equal to matrix A times the sum of u and v. So notice on the left we have function notation. On the right we have matrix A times the sum of u and v. Well, A times the sum of u and v is equal to A times u plus A times v. And A times u is T of u. And A times v is T of v, which is what we wanted to show. T of the sum of u and v is equal to T of u plus the T of v. And let's also prove T of C times u equals C times T of u. Well, T of C times u is equal to matrix A times the product of C and u. Using the commutative and associative properties of multiplication, we can write this as C times the product of A and u. And C times the product of A and u does give us C times T of u. I hope you found this introduction helpful.